let us stand. We are strangers before thee and sojourners as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow and there is none abiding. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. For I know that thou wilt bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You may be seated.
Bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name together. Amen. We have come today to celebrate. We've come to celebrate the homegoing of one of God's beloved daughters, sister, mother, Willini Huggins, amen. To this family, we continue to hold you in our prayers. We hold you in love and in the joy of Jesus Christ, our resurrected Savior, amen. Amen. The family has prepared a wonderful program. Um, we will go according to the program. We'll have a hymn, congregational hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, Prayer of Comfort, Deacon Steve Woodard, Inspirational reading, Psalm 46 by Deacon Wayne Stokes. Another musical selection by a soloist. Reflections by Reverend Dr. Edith Stokes, associate minister and family member. Another reflection by Denise Quinlan. And after that, we will come back for further directions. Amen. If you'll come in that order. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Let us uh, bow our heads and join our hearts as we take everything to God in prayer. Most kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. It is 
probably not one of our happiest days, Lord, but Lord, we know, we know, Lord, that even though the S-U-N doesn't always shine, we know that the S-O-N always shines. And we thank you, Lord. And Lord, right now we call on you to bring comfort to this family, Lord. Lord, we want them to know, Lord, that we're going to put our arms around them, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the life of Mother Walene Huggins, a good and faithful servant on this earth and at the West Hunter Street Baptist Church. Lord, we ask that you just continue to strengthen each and every family member, Lord. Let them know that you will never leave or forsake them, Lord. Lord, we just ask is that as they go through this, this period, this difficult time, Lord, that you would pour your spirit on them. Let them know, Lord, that they are not alone. Give them a peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we can't do nothing without you. And so as we lean on you every day, Lord, we ask that you would continue to just continue to, to, to strengthen, comfort their hearts. Lord, we, we thank you, we love you, and we give you all the praise and glory. In the precious, powerful, and mighty name of Jesus do we pray. And every heart said amen. Our inspirational reading comes from the New Testament, Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present health in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar, and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, shall I, there's a river, the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shalom. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He beckoned the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will exalt all among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shalom.
if you want to know where I'm going, where I'm going soon. If anybody asks you where I'm going, where I'm going, I'm going soon. Yeah, yeah I'm going up a yonder. I'm going up a yonder. I am going up a yonder to be with my take the pain, the heartaches they bring, the conference in the wing, I'll soon be gone. As God gives me grace, I will run this race until I see my Savior. Good morning, Dr. Jackson. Good morning, brothers and sisters gathered together in the household of faith this day. In the spirit of Huldah, the great teacher, in the spirit of Deborah, the great warrior, yeah. in the spirit of Tabitha, known as Dorcas, the great entrepreneur yeah. and carer of her community, in the spirit of Mary Magdalene in devotion, you will find Willini Huggins. Mm. St. Kitts and North Carolina met two women of great faith. She touched many with her unconditional love. And the question that she would always leave you with that would resonate to the glory of God in any given situation in her nurturing of you, caring about you, and caring for you was simply this, where is your faith? Mm. To the glory of God this day, Mother Huggins, as I and all of us have gathered this day to celebrate your life and legacy, that question will resonate with us in good times and bad times, right. in joys and in sorrows, in births and in death, because you were a model of the great Christian faith, and you let a lamp of light of love follow you from this day forward. This is submitted in the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, that Mother Huggins always pointed us to by asking, where is your faith? Amen. 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 
Good morning. Good morning. Mrs. Huggins has been a pillar in the Atlantic Caribbean community for the past three decades. She arrived in Atlanta in 1991 and immediately began to contribute to the Caribbean community here. Over the past 33 years, some of the organizations and events to which she devoted her time and support include the Virgin Islands Association of Georgia, the Atlantic Caribbean Association, the Georgia Caribbean American Heritage Coalition, Caribbean American Heritage Month, the Atlanta Caribbean Carnival, the St. Kitts and Nevis Annual Picnic, and the St. Kitts and Nevis Association of Atlanta. The Caribbean community of Georgia will de deeply miss her patronage and stalwart support. Her children, Joycelyn, Glenda, and Floris, would be the first to tell you that their mom was always by their side, helping in any way that she could. She was a constant presence at Caribbean community events, offering assistance and support. During Caribbean American Heritage Month, she would bring items from St. Kitts to proudly display at the Georgia State Capitol. She attended the Virgin Islands Association meetings and helped to cook and prepare for the Atlanta Carnival and the St. Kitts and Nevis annual picnic. And she would never miss a St. Kitts and Nevis Association of Atlanta gala. In fact, she was always among the first of the guests to be seated. The St. Kitts and Nevis Association of Atlanta and many other Caribbean organizations that she supported extend our deepest cond condolences to the family and friends for their loss. And we pray that God would fill their hearts with peace and comfort as they grieve the loss of a loving mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister, aunt, and friend. Thank you. Amen. Next, we'll be led in a congregational hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, found on page 153, hymn number 153 in your hymnal. Following Great is Thy Faithfulness, we'll have reflections by Sister Minnie Jordan, president of the West Hunter Street Baptist Church Mothers Board, a musical selection by Kenan, Tori Lewis, great niece and great nephew. Following that, we'll have another reflection by Dester Lewis, niece, and the family welcomes you to make reflections if you are so led, limited to two minutes. Thank you. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have. And hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, on. 
unto thee. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto Good morning. Good morning. To Pastor Jackson, Sunday. members of the clergy, clergy, officers, members, and family and friends. My name is Minnie Jordan. I'm the president of the Mother's Board Ministry. Mother Delicia Gardner and I talked to some of the members who had served longer than we had to get their thoughts on Mother Huggins. Mother Hollyfield said Mother Huggins was soft-spoken, always participated in all of the Mother's Boys activities. You couldn't help but love her. She was dedicated, and you never find, found her in a bad mood. She worked diligently with others. In her heart, she lived a Christian life. Her daughter, Glenda, would be with her, not saying a word. She loved God, Wes Hunter, and her family. Each year, she would return to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Canivius. But when she returned, she always made sure her dues was paid today. Mother Fanny Wood said it was a beautiful family. She picked them up and brought them to different activities at the church. She also said they were always, always ready and on time. How many of us can say that? My, my. <laughs> Mother Charlie Mae Blaylock said Mother Huggins was nice and quiet. She served as the assistant treasurer when Mother Blaylock was the financial secretary. She also served in the same capacity when Mother Naomi Payne was the financial secretary. When she first became ill, she turned all the money over to the mother's board. Mother Delicia Gardner knew the family, especially her daughter Flores, Flores' daughter, Deidre, Deidre's son, Ibeka, Ebekia, better known as Junior because Junior was in the Christ, uh, children's choir. Mm -hmm. The other sister, Jocelyn, would bring them to church rehearsal or pick them up up, I'll pick them up. Her son, Kadea, took piano lessons here at West Hunter under the, the late Miss Virginia Longino. Mm -hmm. Delicia also kept in contact with Flores during Mother Huggins' last uh, illness, trying to keep her encouraged and praying for 
for them. What can you say about Mother Willina Huggins? She was soft-spoken. She had a beautiful, infectious smile and was real friendly and worked diligently with others. She loved God, West Hunter, and family. I would like to leave you with this poem by Mary Alice Remick. Those we love remain with us, for love itself lives on, and cherished memories never fade because the loved one's gone. Those we love can never be more than a thought apart. For as long as there is memory, they will live in our hearts. Thank you. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good morning. Uh, just a few words before we begin. Um, what can I say about my aunt? The thing I remember most is definitely that energy, that smile, and that 70th birthday party. Oh. Seeing her dancing around in that circle singing her song. That's the memory that I remember most. But just um, in these times, as hard as they may be, just pray for our family, just for the peace and for the comfort. And uh, we're going to uh, deliver. Um, I'm her niece, great niece. My name is Tori Lewis. And just as my brother was saying, she just had such a beautiful, beautiful spirit. And that's what's going to be remembered the most. Who would have known? that you'd have to go so suddenly so fast how could it be that the sweet memories would be all all that we had left and now that you're gone, every day I go on. But life's just not the same. I'm so empty inside, and these tears I can't hide. So I try, I try to fight the pain, but I'm missing you. Although I'm missing I'll find a way to get through. I'll find a way living without you. Cause you were my mama, my strength, and my pride. Only God may know why. Still I will get by. Oh, there's so many things that we could have shared. If time was on our side, ooh, and even though that you're gone, I can see you, feel you near. So I smile, I smile through every tear I cry, although I'm missing you. Although oh, I'm I 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Desta Lewis. I'm Keenan and Tori's mom, and I am Aunt Willamie's niece. I speak to you on behalf of my family, my sisters and brother that could not be here. They send their love and their sincere condolences for the loss. We will truly miss Aunt Willamie. I looked at the picture of her on this program and I said that depicted her so exceptionally. At every family gathering, every Christmas dinner, every Thanksgiving, every time we were in Aunt Willamie's presence, she came through the door with that big, beautiful, infectious smile on her face. And no matter what you were feeling, you couldn't help but be uplifted and inspired. I'm going to miss that. I just want to say that although Aunt Willamy is gone in body, she will always remain with us in spirit. I'm going to leave the family with a poem called Yellow Birds and Butterflies. My spirit flies free like yellow birds and butterflies. My soul soars high in God's heavenly skies. My prayers have been answered. No more tears, no more cries. With my strength and courage, I leave you to rise. I leave you all blessings of life and love to prize. But today, I am free like yellow birds and butterflies. Aunt Willany fought a valiant fight, and now she is taking her rest. May God be with us all. Amen. If there are any other guests or family members that would like to give reflections, you are welcome to do so now. Good morning, everyone. I, my name is Anna Taylor James. I'm a member of the Carolanta Players. And so is Joyce Lynn, and I would like to say her entire family. Her mom for over 20 years was an avid supporter of the Carolanta players. I dare to say a silent director. <laughs> she would sit through some grueling hours of sometimes contentious rehearsals, but her smile was always reassuring. You knew when you looked out and saw her, everything is gonna be okay. That smile was just infectious. She would not criticize us while we were on stage, never. But the director would count on her to give her valid critique. 
She supported us during our different activities, whether it be skates or to our plays. She did not act on the stage, but was there to assist in decorating, setting up, and cleaning, or in whatever capacity she, would be, she could assist us in. She was very supportive. Joyce Lane, her sisters, and the entire family are always dedicated supporters of the Caribbean community. Joyce Lane, <laughs> even though she's not a Jamaican, she was not intimidated by the Jamaicans. <laughs> she was always there with us and is always there with us. Our last um, skit was probably a year before COVID and uh, her mom was in the hospital, but Joycelyn still came to rehearsal. She would sometimes leave the hospital to come to rehearsal, or she would leave rehearsal to go to the hospital to visit her mom. You know, such a level of dedication. And uh, I know she got that from her mom because she was relentless. Every function, she was there. Every place. Anyone she missed, probably she was not in the island. Or you know what she would really do? She would wait until after the production, then she would go home to St. Vincent. She wouldn't miss it. I mean, this lady was just awesome, awesome. And our spirit will live with us. And family members, we love you. And the Carolanta players send their love. And some, a lot of them could not be here, but we could not miss it. I had to leave work, OK? <laughs> so we love you all and praying for you. Thank you all. Hello. My name is Brenda Coakley. Um, I miss Miss Wellini in 2018 when I first joined the Mother's Board. She welcomed me with that smile. It was just like, it just grabbed me. Her smile just grabbed me. And she was like, you are the youngest mother I ever seen on the mother's board. And she like, really? She said, you really, you wanna do this? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, we welcome you. She hugged me, she kissed me. And ever since then, I just been there and she, I just want to say that her, her smile touched me so much. It just, it's infectious. Everybody keeps saying that, but it is. And, and I just want to thank you, family, for allowing me to speak on her behalf. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laverne Huggins. Just happen to have the last name, no relation. But it's okay because we're all from St. Kitts. I grew up in the Zion Moravian Church, and that's where I met the butlers, because I always call her Sister Butler, because I knew her as a butler. Because as a kid, I grew up with Joyce Lynn and Glenda and Flores and all the Glassfords, because I remember the first time she came back to visit and I had a double take, it's like, oh, I thought that was Mrs. Glassford, because they look so much alike. And so I just want to say on behalf of the Huggins family, my mom sends her prayers, and I know you're going to see her in a couple weeks, uh, because it's so funny that she and her sister go home every Christmas, and every time I talk to my mom, she will say, Sister Butler, say hi, knowing that I'll see her in a couple months. And every time she sees me, she'll say, make sure you tell your mom I say hi. So it was just this ongoing joke. And so, like I said, my mom, you know, she was cat felt. And so she just want to give the greetings to her. And I know, like I said, you guys will see her when you guys go to the Moravian Church for her final service. I love you guys. Good morning. My name is Ebio Gong, and I'm the dad to Junior. Exactly 24, 24, and she became pregnant. She told me 
Deidre, that her grandma wanted to meet me. I was scared because she told me about the grandma and she told me about her aunt, Joycelyn. So here I was, young, but terrified at the same time meeting a grandma. But when I walked into Caron Circle 775, there she was sitting in the living room to the left. And she said, sit down. We sat down, almost peed on my pants, but I didn't show that. But what I noticed about her was, she just asked me, what is it, what are your plans with my granddaughter? I don't know. She said, well, we are a family community, so you must sit up and take care of your child, uh, Deidre. I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And when Gina was born, Deidre insisted that he wasn't going to the daycare. And I know how much money she saved me for not putting my son in the daycare. Every day, she was there to babysit and take care of Gina. So Gina, till today, never went to a daycare. And she was a teacher. So she was teaching Junior everything. And she was always coming over to my side of the family too, because I'm an African, Nigerian. So that African Caribbean stuff, she was always cooking. She loved cooking and taught Deidre how to cook some of the Caribbean food. And I became I would say uh, addicted to the Caribbean food because sometimes Deidre would go over to Joyce Lane or to their house and bring food. And that too was kind of having a problem with us because I was asking Deidre why couldn't she cook? <laughs> and I do remember too that Miss Hoggins was even coming over to our little apartment to cook for us or to teach Deidre how to cook back in the day. So all I can say in essence is that even though she never knew me, she never saw me until that fateful day that I went to Caron Circle, she took me in. And gradually, Joycelyn came to accept me because of the mother. And the whole family, Glenda was very supportive till tomorrow. So I don't have anything negative but positive things to say about her 24, 25 years now and still counting. Fond memories. Yes, she travels all the time for three, four months of the year. Come back and bring, uh, is it cocoa bread or something from from the islands. I remember those. And all I can say is that we go, we're all gonna miss her. Even Gina calls her grandma. I kept telling him she's not your grandma, she's your great grandma. And all I can say is that thank you for sharing her with us or with me. And I, I had to come today. I said, even I have another funeral, a cab driver, a fellow cab driver died that it's happening in Latonia that I have to run to, but I said, I must come here to pay my respect. And unfortunately, the same funeral home my dad too is in, so how convenient for him. So thank you. I like to say thank you. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I, I give 
service, you will notice that that was not the song. But there's a reason for that, a very good reason. And you'll see in a minute. God, how we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, your loving kindness. We thank you, O oh God, for your son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we live, move, and have our being. We thank you that in him, we have eternal and abundant life. For your son Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. God, we thank you for the life, the love, the legacy of Mother Walini Huggins. We thank you for the treasures that she has deposited into the lives of these, your people. God, we thank you for this family we thank you for the time that we've had to share and get to know one another. We lift them up into your presence today, O oh God, knowing that this is all a part of your plan and finding comfort in the words to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So be with them, O oh God. Keep them, comfort them, hold them in the hollow of your hand. Give them strength in these upcoming days, weeks, months, and years. And then God bless this church family that we might be your arms reaching out and holding them as you would hold them. Keep them in perfect peace is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ that we pray and say thanks. And all the saints of God said together, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. To this family. Our love, our condolences, our prayers go out for you to each of you gathered here today. Amen. We will not prolong the time. Amen. But there is a word from the Lord today coming from one of Mother Huggins' favorite passages of Scripture. If you know anything about Mother Huggins, you will know that all of the songs and Scriptures that have been mentioned or read or sung are some of her favorites. Another, Psalm 27. There we will find our preaching text for today. Psalm 27 reads as following. It says, a psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies around about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. For the time that we have to share with each other on this Friday afternoon, I want to talk about a few of her favorite songs. A few of her favorite songs. One thing I believe that Mother Wellini Huggins leaves with us today is the importance of music in the life of a believer. You'll know from having read the obituary that Mother Huggins played the drums in her father's band, Butler's Band. You may have also noticed that she enjoyed singing in various church choirs. But not only that, what you don't find and what you won't find in the obituary is the fact that Mother Huggins was a ballroom dancer and enjoyed cutting the rug with her beloved. But not only that, the hymns that were sung during this homegoing celebration were some of her favorite hymns, hymns that remind us of the faithfulness of God and the friendship that we share because of that faithfulness. Hymns that remind us of how no matter how difficult life, we, life becomes, we can still proclaim with joy, it is well with my soul. And some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. One thing Mother Wellini Huggins leaves us with today is the importance of music in the life of a believer. And my brothers and sisters, Mother Huggins is not the only one who understands the importance of music in the life of a believer. David, who penned Psalm 27, also knows the importance of music in the life of a believer. That's what he's doing in Psalm 27. He's, he's singing that last verse I read to you. It says, I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. That's what he's doing. He's singing praises to his God. He is a expressing his, his confidence in God. David's confidence in God was not a passing fad, though. He is expressing a faith in God that is founded on two factors. Those two factors are David's immense delight in the Lord and David's intense desire for the Lord. Let me look at, let's look at the immense, immense delight in the Lord. First of all, David's immense delight in the Lord is founded on the fact that David has some personal dealings with the Lord. He says, he says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? On a personal level, David recognizes the fact that in a dark world, God lights his pathways and gives him direction. On a personal level, David realizes that when he gets into trouble, the Lord comes and saves him out of trouble. On a personal level, David realizes that when he gets weak along life's journey, 
God gives him strength. Over the years, David had been in situations where he sure enough needed the Lord. And what David found out was that on a personal level, there was never a time when God ever let him down. Now, this is not to say that David always had everything that he wanted. This is not to say that every day was sunshine and rainbows and flowers, but he wanted to make sure that we knew that even though he did not have everything he wanted, he always had what he needed. David had that kind of personal testimony that could say, I know God and I know him for myself. And can I tell you, family, that Mother Walene Huggins demonstrated that same immense delight in the Lord. She knew the importance of spending time in prayer and devotion. She had prayer partners all over the world, and she kept her family in prayer. And when she had to give up her job as a secretary, she did not give up on God, and she did not give up on life. But she trusted God to lead her in another direction, a direction where she would have a chance to minister to and touch life lives through the field of teaching and even if she never got a chance to mention the names God or Jesus in the classroom I'm crazy enough to believe that she demonstrated to her children to her students that when you get in trouble the Lord will come and save you and when you get weak along life's journey God will give you strength and when you're overcome by darkness in this world. God will light your pathways and give you direction. I'm crazy enough to believe that Walene Huggins demonstrated on a personal level that I know God and I know him for myself. But that's not all. That's not all. Not only was David's immense delight in the Lord founded on his personal dealings with the Lord, but David's immense delight in the Lord was also based on some past dealings with the Lord. <laughs> Somebody say past dealings. Here's, 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 the, here's the English language. It says, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Came is a past tense verb. And when you put ED on the end of stumble, you put stumbled in the past tense as well. So David is testifying that some things have happened in the past. And I needed God to show up. David says, I had some enemies and some foes who desired to take me out. When they tried to trip me up, they were the ones who fell. David realized that the trap that the enemy set was the trap that the enemy fell into. And David's past dealings with the Lord reminded him that he had some Goliaths. And he had some Sauls. And he had some lions. And he had some bears. But not only that, David had some times when he needed the Lord to be a shepherd and a shield. He had some times when he needed the Lord to be his protector and his provider. And what David discovered is that when he looked back over his life, when he allowed himself to do a flashback, he could truly say that God had blessed him. And, and watch this, watch this. You don't live to be 88 years old like Mother Huggins unless you've got some past dealings with the Lord. See, past dealings with the Lord will keep you even though you've been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Past dealings with the Lord will make you remain committed to being on the 6 a.m. prayer call. Past dealings with the Lord will remind you that you can bounce back even after you've uh, dealt with seizure disorders. And past dealings will give the, you a testimony that you can share with your grandson that even though I had to move from job to job after passing the cancer, Cambridge exam, I still trusted God and believed God for the career that God promised because 
I always had hope in my God. So back in Psalm 27, David has, a, has personal dealings with God. He has past dealings with God. But if you read the text closely, he also has some promised dealings with God. Uh, he says, though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. In this will I be confident. David's past dealings were concerned about what had happened. His promised dealings were concerned with what was to come. David's past dealings with the Lord affected his opinions of his promised dealings. What do you mean? I'm glad you asked. Notice in verse 2, verse 2 talks about past victory. Verse 3 speaks of future or promised victory. If David had not experienced past victory, then he would not be able to expect future or promised victory. But since the enemies and foes who came up to eat up his flesh in the past stumbled and fell, then the expectation was that when hosts camp against him and war rose against him in the future, he could still be confident in his victory because his victory was always in God. And that's why, I need y'all to know this, that's why this family kept fighting so hard for their mother. They fought so hard because they knew that through God, she had won some past victories. And, and when you win victories through God in the past, the expectation is that you're going to give God the glory for some victories that God is about to win in your life. The expectation is that if God healed in the past, if you just give God some time to work, you can be confident that healing is going to come again. The expectation is that if God made a way in the past, if you just give God some time to work, you can be confident that God is going to make a way one more time. So David had an immense delight in the Lord which was driven by personal and past dealings with the Lord. But watch this, and I'm almost done. Because David's intense delight led to, I'm sorry, David's immense delight led to his intense desire. Intense desire. David says, there are two things that I want, that I desire with all my heart. He wants to experience First of all, the presence of the Lord in his house. David says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord to, and to inquire in his temple. He says, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, not just on Sunday. He did not go to services out of a sense of duty. He did not look at it as just something else that he had to do. He knew it was a privilege to go to the house of of the Lord. He did not do it just one day of the week. He desired to be there all the days of his life. But not only did David's immense, intense desire make him want to be in the presence of the Lord, but it also made him want to be under the protection of the Lord. He says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up up on a rock. And here it is. So many times we run to God when we come upon trouble. <laughs> but David sought God's guiding presence and protection, not just when he was in trouble, but every day, 
When trouble came his way, he knew that because he was already in God's presence, he was already experiencing God's protection. David understands that when the enemy is on the attack, if he cannot find a physical hiding place, God will be his hiding place. And here is how confident David is in the protection of God. The text says, not that he might hide me. The text says, he shall hide me. How do I know? Because he's done it before. And if he's done it before, he can do it again. Watch this. Every year, and I'm done. Mother Huggins looked forward to going back to St. Kitts for Christmas. Every year, she looked forward to going back home to St. Kitts for Christmas. But can I tell you that on last Monday, she went to a home that is far better than St. Kitts at Christmas time. I said last Monday she went to a home that's far better than St. Kitts could have ever been even at Christmas time. Now she's dwelling in the house of the Lord all of her eternal days. She's in God's protection. Protection from rheumatoid arthritis. Protection from seizure disorder. Protection from dialysis. But better than being in God's protection, she's in God's presence. And when you're in God's presence, there ain't but one thing you can do, praise him and sing a few of your favorite songs. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like a sea billow roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a land on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. She's singing a few of her favorite songs. I, 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 and I believe that, that streets of gold are a perfect place to do a little ballroom dancing. I believe that being in the presence of God it's all the music that she needs to hear because now she's hearing every day angels flying from place to place, singing one to the other, holy, holy, holy. She's singing a few of our favorite songs. To the family, God bless you and God keep you. Be encouraged. Know Beyond the shadow of a doubt, your mother loved you, and you showed through your staying by her side, fighting for her, advocating for her, that you loved her just as much as she loved you. And if she could say anything to you now, she'd say, I love you and thank you for all you've done for me. To God be the glory for the things that God is doing. Amen. Hymn number 434, I'll fly away. Amen. If you'll join us in singing that, then we'll have acknowledgments from Willie A. Watkins' funeral home. We'll have the parting prayer and then the recessional. Amen. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Oh, and I'll fly away. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadow of this life is grown, oh, and I'll fly away. 
awake like a bird from prison bars have flown oh when i fly away oh when i fly away oh glory now fly away when i die hallelujah by my Just a few more weary days and then, oh, and I fly away to that land where joy should never end. Oh, and I fly away. Oh, sing and I, I fly away. Oh, glory. Just put those hands together one more time and celebrate the life of Miss Huggins. Amen. First, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life, to the eulogists and the musicians of the hour. This family simply says thank you to the many friends and family who gather here to celebrate the life, the love, and the legacy of Miss Huggins. This family would simply ask me to thank you. Thank you for your cards, your calls, your floor tributes, your visits on yesterday, but most of all, your presence here on today. And to this beautiful family, on behalf of my senior director, Mr. Willie A. Watkins, and the entire Willie A. Watkins funeral home staff where the name is service, we're ever so grateful that you've entrusted your precious loved one in our care during your hour of bereavement. And knowing so, we prepared this memorial plaque for you to keep and cherish until you meet Mother Huggins again. Let us all pray. God, how we thank you. We thank you, God, for your love. A love that was so unselfish that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Your word reminds us that you so love the world that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in our lives even now. That power keeps us. That power sustains us. That power reminds us, God, that we may weep, we may mourn, but we do not mourn as those who have no hope. For our hope is in you. Weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so, God, we thank you that Willini Huggins has received her wake-up call. And she is experiencing the joy of the Lord that is her strength. And that has been her strength throughout 88 blessed years. God, we thank you for a life well lived. A life of joy. A life of love. A life of 
music and dancing, a life of involvement in her church, a life of raising her family and teaching them the way to go. God, we thank you. We thank you for this family. We pray, oh God, that you be true to your word, that you be a shield, their strength, and the lifter up of a bow down head. We pray, God, that you be true to your word, that you would wipe every tear from their eyes. We pray, God, that you be true to your word, that you would keep them in perfect peace because their minds are stayed on you. God, we pray that you be true to your word, that you will be a shelter in the time of storm, a refuge for the righteous to run in to be saved. God, we love you today. We praise your name. And as we leave this place, God, keep us in your loving arms of care and protection. Lead and guide us in your way and in your truth. God, allow us to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed when we come and blessed when we go. God, allow everything our hand to touch that it would be blessed because you are our source and our strength. You are our God. As we leave, God, we pray that we go forth in your presence, your power, your protection, and your love. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. And we will give your name praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and say thanks. And all the saints of God said together, amen, amen, and amen. You are all free to join us downstairs afterwards for a repast. Amen. Amen. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. To the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of God cometh at an hour when ye think not. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God.